Hello and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to get landscapes like this in Minecraft. It will require you to download two external programs, which will be linked down in the description. But once you do, um, all you need to do is follow along with the tutorial and you can get landscapes looking like this for your worlds. Um, this has no world edit or like voxel machine or whatever that plugin's called. Um, it's, it's just, uh, it's no mods. This is vanilla with shaders and shaders too. But you, in the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to have something like this for free. No purchases needed. I haven't bought anything to do this. Um, and even custom trees if you want to give it a different feel, but quite personally, I like the vanilla feel. But without further ado, let's get into this tutorial. All right, the first thing that you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to head to worldpainter.net. As I said, everything is linked in the download. All right, the first thing that you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to head to worldpainter.net. Um, everything, as I said, is linked in the description, um, but you're gonna to need to download the download that's appropriate for your system. Um, I use Windows, so I'm going to be downloading uh, Windows 64-bit. Um, if you're on Mac or Linux, make sure to install the correct download. All you need to do is click on that and click save if that pops up or it will just download for you. And then next, you're going to need to head to world-machine.com slash download.php, which is also linked in the description. And you don't need to type in your name or your email. All you need to do is click download world machine. And then if that pops up, click save. I have some different settings enabled than default, so it just might pop up. And if it says it might be a virus, click like OK or keep anyway. And then we're going to launch World Painter, the downloader. Again, I already did this, so just go through the steps. And then the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to launch World Machine. And you're going to go to File, New. And you're going to create a new thing. It will uh, create. And then here we go. I just suggest to delete everything that's here, including all these things. You can just use click and delete, left click and delete. And really the easiest thing to use is probably starting with an advanced Perlin, which you click and then click again. And then you can press escape to get out of that. And then you can look up in that corner and you can get different seeds, which gives you different types of things. And then what I suggest doing is going here, clicking on advanced Perlin, and then do um, add some water to the scene so you can see the water. Um, so you have to click see in water and go over here. I guess you should also edit this a little bit. Um, middle elevation, you can change that, kind of turn that up a little. Add some like middle elevation. That looks pretty good. Um, and then just edit these settings how you like. Um, find a seed that you like to. And then try to get the water in there. Um, so you're going to go like that. Get some water, um, which is looking good. And then click attach new layout as mask input and click box and then select that. And then you're going to not invert values and use breakup. And then just edit that, uh, right click, and then you can edit the box. Um, you want probably nothing to be outside of the 
box so you don't get any terrain that's like cut off. And then you're just going to drag that on the middle. And then you can edit that a little bit. Edit the fall off distance, which I'm going to just turn up to like that. And your island will look different because you probably have a different seed than me. If you were to take my exact settings and my exact seed, then you'd get the same thing as me. And then that's looking good. So I'm going to... So the advanced pearl and mask is there. And then you're going to go to um, natural. And you probably want to make some coastal erosion. Attach that up. And... Make sure you got the same water level here. So I'm just going to edit that. Uh, it shows on the left. So 645, 645.996, and then OK. And now there's some coastal erosion. And you're going to take some erosion. And you're going to connect up the height field. And you can change that to channeled erosion. Um, and erosion duration, you can change that stuff up. Filter strength, maybe turn that up a little. Turn up the carry amount and the rock hardness. And then I'd say that's probably good enough for this tutorial. Um, I'll link some tutorials in the description how to make different things. You don't have to make an island. You can do different things, but clicking up here, you can change like the light and stuff. You can make like mountains. You can do all these different things. And then to finish it off, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to come to uh, output and you're going to take um, height output here. And you're going to take that and you're going to put it over there. And then now this is going to give you a file. You click PNG, click OK, don't render that yet. And then you're going to come up here and click this green build button in the top uh, bar. And then now if you go in here, you'll see kind of what you're going to get. Um, so I got some like flat terrain there, some like a mountain there. kind of goes over there, but it doesn't really matter for, at least in my opinion, for this tutorial, you're probably going to want to do something better. And then now you can click write output to disk and it will give you the directory file C and then go to world machine in the documents folder. So now you're going to open up world painter and you're going to go to file import new world and then from height map and you're going to go here and you're going to find the height map you're just going to choose it there um and you can see that the island is already there but it looks a little bit off because we have to adjust the sea level so you're going to go back to here and you're going to open up this on the side and you're just going to go back and forth edit the uh water level here um, until it looks the same. So this is a separate island from that. So I'm just going to go up to there. And I think that is pretty much it. Yep, almost to a T. And then I, maybe one more. Or down. Is that more accurate? You may find that you can't get it exactly accurate because Minecraft is in blocks and that's a little bit smoother. Um, but you can turn up the scale if you want. So I'm just going to go to 200%. Um, expanding this window a little bit, you'll be able to see a little bit more of the map. And now because I have an increased height, I'm pretty sure it increased it also increases the resolution so you might be able to get it more precise 
with how it is. Um, you'll notice that this is stretched a little bit, which we'll fix in a second. And then this is good. So we're just gonna just click OK. And then we're gonna go to edit, add it, slash, uh, add, expand, or remove tiles. And we're gonna select these weird tiles on the side. So now I got all those selected and you click remove tiles, remove those tiles and then close out of that. And now we've got this, um, which is just the island. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the grass. I'm gonna grab a hard brush, um, increase the intensity up to 100% and then just cover everything with grass here. You can just also go global operations, fill with terrain type grass, and then just go go. And now everything is grass. And the next thing that you want to do is you want to look over here. This is height 63. It says down there in the corner. So you're going to go to um, global operations at or below, and then choose 63. 63 like that. And we're going to select sand. And then you're going to go with just click OK after. Yeah, you should click feather too. So click OK now. And now all of this is feathered. You might want to touch it up a little bit because um, the feathering isn't the best. So what you can do is you can go with a pencil. You can get a smaller brush, turn down the intensity, select grass over here, and then use shift minus and um, or shift plus, either one, to add or remove brush values. So make, make it bigger or smaller. And now I can take the pencil or the spray paint. I'm just going to use the spray paint for this. And don't choose only on grass, get rid of that. Uh, I'm just gonna use the pencil. Okay, and then now you can just like go through this, change this up a little bit, maybe make some hard edges to beaches. It is important to note that you can create a world without world machine, but you probably won't get a world looking nearly as good um, so what you need to do is if you want to do that, just go to your version of Minecraft, choose the dimensions that you want. So I'm going to go 1024 by 1024. And you're going to go flat, get rid of beaches, um, set the same level as water. So 62 and just create that. And then you'll have this world and you can just use brushes and create something just using the brush. You can turn that up, um, go to raise and lower, and then you're just going to turn that all into water. It is important to note that it's much easier with world painter as you don't actually have to be good at creating landscapes. You can just, you can actually just like easily do stuff. So. You can create some mountains. And then just like flatten stuff. But it's really hard to gauge, and I just suggest all out just using World Machine because it's so much easier. And then one thing that I like to do is I like to take rock. And above 45 degrees and now you get some nice rock detail um, maybe I should turn that up to above like or turn it down to above 36 degrees and then that will add a little bit more rock go like that and now there's some nice rock details um, maybe make sure it's not going into the water so I'm gonna just grab um, the beach again and 
on the on water. Go. And now it's looking good. And now you gotta make a choice. You can either grab schematics um, of custom trees, or you can just like make your own. Um, make you can make your own trees, or you can use vanilla trees. Anything's up to you. For this, I will show how to add custom trees. So you're gonna go down here, go to the layers tab, go down here, click the check, add a custom object layer and go to get custom objects and custom tree repository. So this will have a few trees in it. And then go to download, continue, and then download that. It will give you a zip file. You don't, you can use 7-zip. Um, which I'll also link in the description. Um, and then you're going to take this and you're going to extract that to a file. And now we have this file and it has some schematics in it. So you go to schematics and it has a bunch of different categories, African, European, North American, South American. It really depends on what type of biome you're going for. You could do like jungle, um, which you could use South American. Um, you could use North American. I'm probably going to use European, even though I'm in North America, but I'm going to use European here um, just because I think those trees look pretty nice. And especially for this, um, it really depends. It's up to you. So you're going to go back to World Painter and you're going to click this Add Custom Objects and you're going to look in your downloads. So go to your account, go to downloads, and you're going to find the custom tree repository, go to the schematics folder, find whatever trees you want, and you're going to want to select all of them. Just click shift, shift click at the end there, and it will select all of them. Click open. It's going to give you a preview of what it will look like. Um, it doesn't have to be that dense. You can kind of change that. And then you're going to click, or you're going to name it um, European Trees and choose a color. Probably leave the decay option because you don't want your leaves to decay when the trees are planted in. But then if they're set to not decay, then once you break the trunk, all of the leaves will just stay there. So. It's kind of hard. Probably leaving it is just your best bet. Um, and you have the trees there. And what you can do if um, you want to is you can go and edit all these trees, Y axis and things like that. Um, and if there's trees that you don't like going edit, it shows you a preview of the tree so you can kind of get an idea of what trees you want and what trees you don't want. So that's like a small tree. Here's a bigger tree. And you can kind of look through them, edit their positions. If you want some like roots in the ground, this one would probably be better just like minus two. Going through all of them, it's going to probably give you better results, but it's going to take a while, really depending on how many trees you have, whether it's worth it or not. And then once you're done with all of that, you're going to click OK. And you're going to select that, and you're going to go to Global Operations. You're going to fill, um, f insert a layer, and you're going to go to European Trees or whatever trees you have, whatever you named it, and the color. and you can add some parameters here. So I'm only going to do it on grass, first of all. I'm going to only do it below like 50 degrees. Or actually, I'm going to go below like 28 degrees or something like that. And then now you can change the density.
I'm oh, sorry, I meant to do fill with layer and you're gonna select the European trees. Probably turn that down really low. Um, you don't want that to be too high or your trees will be really dense. It really depends if you want the trees to be the main part or you want the island. I kind of want to see all these different cliffs and stuff and not be blocked out by trees. So that's also one of the reasons why you might not want to use big trees. You might want to use smaller types of trees, but I think this is going to be fine. So I do fill with layer European trees, turn that down, click go. And now um, there is a small layer of European trees on here. And now I've got a pretty good looking island, so I can load this up into Minecraft by going File, Export, Export as a new Minecraft map. And you can title this whatever you want. Um, I'm going to call this Tutorial Island. And what I like to do, if it's an island, that is, um, I like to put an endless border of water. Um, if it's like, if it's just a cutout of land, you might want to use void or a bedrock wall, um, which you can change here. You can use like, you can use void and then, or no border and then bedrock wall. But I'm just going to use endless water here. Um, depending on what you want, um, you can change the game modes and things like that. You're going to want to export it into Minecraft 1.14.4 or later. Change it to creative, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to do that so I can just fly around and see everything. Um, if you want cheats, then you should allow cheats. Do all that stuff and click export. It'll probably take a few minutes. While you're waiting for this, you can go down and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified every time I post a new video. Um, go down to the description, check out my Twitch channel if you really want. Got a, got a plug when, when you got a plug, you know? And it will say success, world exported to your saves folder. Um, gives you some statistics on the world, how many like blocks there are in the land, how many water or lava areas, total surface and stuff like that. Um, just click OK, and that will minimize, and you're going to go to your Minecraft. You're going to navigate to your single-player folder. And here it is, Tutorial Island. It will say version World Painter, um, but just uh, probably load that with I know what I'm doing, because, as you might have guessed, I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. But now, looking around, you can see we've got a custom island. There's some trees like this. These trees are supposed to move down, as you can see. Those are like roots. Um, but you got some nice like ridges and stuff like that. Some tall trees. And really just looking nice overall. There's probably, you can exaggerate different things, really different nodes and things like that in World Machine will give you very different results, as well as using different types of trees and different materials. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this tutorial. I've been Command Cube, and see you next time. Look at that edge. Looking pretty nice.